What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. You know, we have a pretty difficult job because when we're trying to troubleshoot things, we often don't have proper documentation to help guide us along the way. So we have to use clues and our own inclination to make the better call judgment. One of the weird parts is circuit boards, figuring out what they do, how they do it, and where to test. And I found the perfect board here it's got a couple of problems, but I'll point those out as well. And, and this board here, it's got a lot of stuff going on. So I have never seen this board before in my life, but I can tell you what it does based on the orientation of the components, the connectors, etc. So let's go ahead and let's check this out. I'll show you what I mean, maybe to help guide you for your troubleshooting in the future. All right, guys, this right here is a very busy board. Now this is a Stryker hospital bed board, and I, I, the only reason I know it's Stryker is because it says in the green print, Stryker, and it also talks about the different motors. Very odd that they took the time and effort to silk screen all these connectors. So uh, I also was able to take a picture of this with Google Lens, and by taking a picture of it with Google Lens, I was able to identify exactly what bed it goes to. But that's not important. The important part is to figure out if you do have a device with a board like this, what does it do? Now, one of the things I will tell you is the manufacturer's nomenclature for a board is often going to be very deceiving. And that's because they might call this a motor control board or a bed control board. And there's a lot of stuff going on in here that you would not expect. Now, if I heard control board, I would normally think it's something with a CPU. I would not think that it's a power supply. This one here has got a power supply. It's also got a motor, motor driver board, this section down here. So it's got a power supply, switch mode power supply, it's got a motor driver board, it's got a computer for the bed, and it's got a lot of stuff going on. And if you're troubleshooting something with this, you should first be able to identify the power in and power out, right? Because we're trying to identify is the board bad or is it good? Well, anytime you see fuses on a board, it's a power in, power out situation. Anytime. So, you see this guy right here? That's also a power in. Now this board has got a really interesting feature, I think. Medical grade power supplies have some redundancy built in, but because this is a bed control board slash power board slash motor driver board this board is not going to be powered on at all times it's probably going to have something called standby power and i'm guessing because i see two relays over here this is the power in and a battery port so power in and battery both have they both have fuses you see those right here right here that's because the batteries could short out and your incoming AC could short out. And it's got two main relays, which is interesting. And over here, you can see all the very typical characteristics of a switch mode power supply. I mean, we've got a common mode choke. We've got large DC caps. We've got our chopper driver. We've got some smoothing diodes. And we've got our smoothing capacitors over here at the exit. So what I believe is going on with this board is ta -da, better indicated on the back. You see, I've got two components that are hidden on the bottom. We have a large full wave bridge, bridge rectifier and we have a small full wave, <laughs> full wave bridge rectifier. I cannot speak this morning, guys. So this board right here, it is, it's got two different power phases going on. And what I believe is happening is most of the power is going to be for driving the motors, of course, but we have to have a standby power system, which means it creates a small voltage. It goes out to several controls. It's going to be the bed rails, etc. So when you turn the bed on, it's going to turn on the rest of the power supply. And also when you are going to activate motors, it's going to, see all these relays? Check those out. 
Interestingly enough, it's got double relays. Now, why would you have double relays? Well, if you want to invert DC, it's going to take two different relays in order to crisscross and reverse polarity the leads for a motor to make the motor run in reverse. And I believe that's why we have doubled up relays. It also helps it double the amount of current that it can handle. But I believe that it's mainly for reversing. So if you have a motor that goes in one direction but not in the other, you see two relays near a motor power port. That would usually indicate that one relay is for one direction, one relay is for the opposite direction. Um, you would check on the bottom to ensure that your hypothesis is correct. So anytime you see large DC caps, fuses, and then smaller DC caps, especially in a particular area, that is going to be your switch mode power supply. And it's going to generate DC mainly for the computer. Uh, these motors here could be switching AC. It's hard to say. It's best to read the label on the motor to figure out what you're supposed to be measuring. There are some current measurements because this is a medical grade power supply. We have some measurements for current, so it would know if one of your motors is pulling too much. Now, notice how we got large connectors, medium connectors, small connectors, and tiny connectors. So the gauge, which is the size of the conductors, is going from the largest, which handles the most amount of current, to moderate, these for, are for each of the motors. Large for the batteries, of course. We've got the small connectors. These ones here are mainly signaling ports. You can see this here is my, it says that it's a CAN bus controller, DC controller. So notice the orientation. We've got all the power happening here, all the motor switching happening here, and over here, this is the actual computer. So if you're having a problem with the bed rail, if you're having a problem with the scale, here are the bed scales. That's got the smallest size conductors because this one here is just a very minute, uh, probably DC that comes in and it takes a analog to digital converter, converts it to a digital signal, and then now this guy knows what it's dealing with for a calibrated measurement. All these pins right here are where you would take your measurements for if a certain feature is not working or if there's a certain error code. Notice the orientation. The size is a big indicator to the function of the port. So these small ports, they're not going to handle very much current. And notice because of their location, it's all going to be DC. Now these ones here could be switching AC. I would say DC based on the components but you never know, I'd read the motor first. So just by taking a look at a board, you can just walk your way through what it does. And a lot of people are, that I get this question when I'm troubleshooting with somebody all the time, how do you know that? How do you know what that board does? Well, I know because I understand what a DC switch mode power supply is gonna look like. I know what motor drivers look like, especially when you see them in a linear configuration like this. I know that motors go forward and reverse, especially when they have these doubled up relays like that. I know over here, even though this one here might be labeled, is it labeled? No, J29, no, it's, it's not labeled. These ones are though. Let's see, what does it say? Right LBS light. And then this one over here says tilt sensor. Okay, so you can see there are sensors being connected. And this one here is a uh, LBS light, so it's going to be a very low amperage. Do not press these buttons <laughs> unless you absolutely want to reset a configuration. And likewise, do not ever, ever change dip switches because they are going to drastically change the way that this board operates, maybe even put it into a programming or diagnostic mode. Not a good idea. Normally, when you want to troubleshoot a board like this, we check for power in, and you're going to check for power out, which there probably are some test points over here at the end of the DC switch mode power supply. 
And there's probably also going to be test points over here before you get to the motor drivers because you want to make sure that you have that uh, DC. Oh, very convenient that you can see they inverted the, the bridge rectifier there so you have full access to the bottom of the terminals from the top. That's actually kind of cool. So it's very easy to test your DC power. Very easy to test your legs for your motors. And if you have an error code of something, you have a very nice layout over here. Bed scales, uh, well, bed scales, there's not very much that you're gonna be able to test. Interestingly enough, down here, there is an RS-232 port, and that is so that you could probably have an output from the scales. I bet you this little chip right here is the chip that controls the scales, and this guy here is probably for calibration and or for some sort of alternate output. Very cool. But anyway, guys, that is a layout, a very good layout of a very complex PCB. Just goes to show you, I've never seen this board before in my life, but it's really not that difficult to figure out what things do. Well, in this case, because some of the things are labeled, but if they're not labeled, use the size of the port, the configuration and the orientation to figure out what that thing does. A big indicator is always going to be the size of the connector. Okay, guys, I just wanted to make a very quick video because I seem to get questions all the time about how do I know where to start troubleshooting if I don't have a manual? Well, being familiar with components and their orientation in certain configurations, that's going to immediately give you very big clues. Now this board here did have some defects and that's one of the reasons it was on my desk. And I actually had somebody come over here and say like, how do you know what that board does? Well, I can tell based on the motor drivers, the fact that it's got a computer on it, the fact it's got a switch mode power supply, I can tell that this is the main board for a device. Whatever that device is, this is it. And if there's a problem with this device, then this part right here is probably going to be the one thing you just change out. There's not going to be too many repairs on this board, although obviously there's a pretty easy layout to change anything out. This is not a complex board whatsoever, but it's going to be one of those things where if something goes wrong for whatever reason, you're just going to change out the whole board anyway. However, be familiar with your components and their layout and get ahead in your troubleshooting. Thanks for watching, guys.